Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is Professor Spira, and I have a very, very special, special interview for you today. We will be talking to Alex Eisenberg, who is a, a, a very, very uh, interesting individual that has uh, gone through some, some physiological uh, trials and tribulations over the years and uh, in recent years found out about Nugus's diet healing system and raw foodism and, and the whole uh, just cleansing and naturally healing yourself uh, movement. And so he is here to tell his story and just uh, just have a discussion with me and kind of explore uh, some some ideas and hopefully some of these things can be inspirational for you and, uh, and edifying, learn something from it. So, so Alex, how you doing, man? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, we've been uh, trying to get this up and running for, for a couple of weeks now. I think the original <laughs> plan was to start it at uh, Woodstock Food Festival. But right. uh, yeah, yeah so, but I'm, I'm happy nevertheless and uh, excited to to just share and, and uh, just the difference of opinion and, and maybe even some commonalities and see where, see where, you know, sh and just share broadcast to the world. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, man. Okay. So, uh, so just t tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, give a little backstory and, you know, physiologically what you've been going through and, you know, just kind of, kind of set, set up the discussion here. Sure. Uh, I'll build, build a story for you. Um, and I, I'm sorry if I go off. I'm not that's not my intent. Short and concise. Um, so around like 14 or 15, I got pretty what they call sick um, or, or ill, more or less. Um, just had a lot of constipation, a lot of mucus build up. Um, for whatever reason, I was put on medication. The standard is uh, insulin, and uh, from there on out, I had a lot of trouble, a lot of a lot of just. I guess what I would consider mucus and just constipation now. I mean, a different terminology for it, but and they uh, diagnosed you with something specific, right? They they said uh, diabetes type one. Type one, okay. So that's what they call it. Yeah. Um, again, you know, I I don't really think I, it's taken a while me to train my mind, but to not think in that way, but. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so they put me on medication. I've been on that more or less on an insulin pump for about 14, 15 years at this point. Um, had a lot of problems. I mean, a lot of issues. I mean, I've been on that more or less for like, I don't know, maybe like at least 35 seizures. Just my wow. Wow. And, and I don't even remember. That's just what my mom tells me. Like emergency yeah. and stuff like that from like 14 or like 20. To 25 or something and then uh, just went through a lot of different things and then I slowly kind of transitioned along the continuum of, of diets more or less and healing system right like the continuum is the worst McDonald's the best is you know clean diet clean body clean mind um, and then I've just been slowly transitioning from uh, more or less like vegetarian like um, Using like meditation, vegan, raw foods diet, this is diet healing system to now where I, I would say I'm probably I don't know, but but I, I have my own kind of uh, personalized ver version of the mucus diet healing system. So that's where I'm at now, and uh, I feel a lot a lot better. Mm. And I'm coming off of my medication so much that uh, hopefully here's my prop for the day. I just sold one of these. This is my insulin pump. I ha I usually what I usually do. This is my been my strategy because I'm not diabetic, but this, well, I think I am. But I I used to hoard these, so I'd get like bunches of these, and then I hold on to them for emergency purposes. Mm, mm. It's a six thousand dollars piece. Oh. Um, so it's like I want as much stuff. I just sold one of these, oh. and it's like I'm getting rid of all of my stuff because I have like years worth of stuff that I no longer need. So it's just yeah. like it's really phenomenal for me. So that's why. Wow. So so you are, are you to, so are you totally totally off the insulin? Or are you still transitioning? Or I'm transitioning off initially. I'm 
highest, I was about one point in traditional terms, right? They would call it a basal rate, which is like kind of like a drip IV, like how much do you take per day? I was like about one point two or three units per hour. So I don't know. And then now I'm about point, I'm less than I'm like point zero two. Point zero two, like ninety percent less, and then I, I take like ten to twenty units a day, maybe. Yeah. So, a lot less. Okay. Yeah. And, then, so, yeah, and, uh, and I know that was yeah that was that was one thing we had talked about, and we'll we'll, we'll talk, talk more about that. So so uh, tell me about I guess before you got into the mucusless diet, talk a little bit about that period. Of what you were doing at that point yeah so that was a big opening for me um, because I um, I was having a lot of you know I this kind of is a crown jewel of what I like to talk about so I'm happy we touched on this because I was having a lot of trouble even though I was pretty young like I just turned 31 but and I feel like I'm like 14 but mm -hmm. I I was like in my 20s like late 20s and like having like issues of diabetic retinopathy and like, <laughs> like my eyes are starting to go my fever all these sensations i was and i was eating like a, a pretty like strong like plant-based diet even more or less and then like vegetarian like a lot of salads a lot of a lot of fruit but really no no talk about like food combining like fasting no like meditation, no, no, not really working on my emotions and so forth. So I, I was having like a lot of problems, you know, I was really, really young. And there was, and it just like one day, it just happened to occur to me when I went, and I was like, well, I'm like in my 20s. And like people who develop these symptoms when they're like, when they're like 70s, this doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? So I don't know, I, I guess I, I kind of turned desperate and I went to a place called the Tree of Life with Dr. Cousins. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing, and that was my introduction to raw food, like pretty much 100% raw food. And, it, and his whole thing was basically pretty much like a ketogenic diet, more or less. Like a lot of salads, but, but high fat. So really no food at all. Right, and right, right. That worked for me in, in terms of the continuum of your trend, of what, what you call transition. Um, it worked for me because it was a lot better than pizza or something like that, but it, I, had, I had a lot of detoxification happen, and uh, it was really tough for me, and uh, I transitioned to fruits when I found a book, somebody mentioned it, called Rational Fasting, like, what the hell is that? Read that book, changed my life overnight, and then I started implementing fruits, and then I went down that whole continuum, and I'm still there, and struggle with that, hmm. and um, thank God I'm, I, Stable. I mean, it takes a while, right? Because once you introduce fruits, I mean, there's a lot of things that happen. So um, the long short of that is I'm feeling a lot better on fruits than I was on just salads and nuts and seeds. Right. Uh, it was pretty heavy on my body. So yeah, that's the short of it. I can go on forever, but I don't want to. And so, uh, so after rational fat, you read rational fasting, and then at what point did you? read about mucus's diet and then you know kind of find uh find my stuff and then we ended up hooking up and, and sure. doing the session um so i read fat rational fasting when i was there and it just it clicked for me the most important thing and it was so weird because i had taken so many supplements just i've taken kind of like the additive principle more or less i've taken stuff in and it just it explained to me everything that I've been trying to figure out. It was answered after I read the mucus diet here and system reaction effects. Yeah, it was just like it was an epiphany that was just like bring. Everything was answered, and um, I felt confirmed, and I felt like I not that I don't want to be searching anymore, but it just I I no longer needed to really have to read a thousand books. Mm -hmm. or because they're all variations of the same theory more or less which is i mean they're just different people's opinions which are different takes on pretty much Arnold there yeah right <laughs> yeah so it's just like 
I don't know, it just put an end to that. And I was so thankful. And I just, I guess after that, I, um, I guess we're talking about uh, that I started to try and find an online form, something that would explain it. And I did. It got around the social media age. And um, I really, really, uh, yeah. And then I, I reached out to you just recently because I was having some issues just overcoming the chips. <laughs> the chips. I, I have some hard things in my life that I've over I had to overcome the pizza and the chips. Mm -hmm. um, among many other things, a lot of the packaged mucus stuff. I'm over. Thank God, I'm over the uh, the meat and the cheese. Those are pretty easy for me. So not easy, but that goes out. So, yeah. anyways, yeah. And I reached out to you, and you gave me a little bit of pointers and implemented those. And uh, we, can talk, we can talk about those later. But yeah, uh, you really helped me kind of get some clarity on that. So yeah, yeah, man. And um, so when you eat fruit now, do you? You have any symptoms that 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 is related to sugar metabolism problems, or does that not even come up? Because that's always the thing. Where of course now there's more awareness of that fruit is not this evil thing. <laughs> that if anything, it's 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 a whole different situation when you're talking about sugar metabolism issues. Uh, so with you. Uh, how how was that? Once you started to eat fruit, how did you how did you feel about that? And, and what mental work did you have to do to kind of overcome the propaganda that you had been given for, for so long? Yeah. Ah, great question. Um, well, let me start that off, that answer off with the first introduction into that pro propaganda um, that I had was, I mean, probably when I was a baby, I mean, I, I was just conditioned to eat certain food, but, but more profoundly is when I was diagnosed with diabetes or whatnot, um, at 14 or so, the first thing that they had me do, and this was, again, this is only 15 years ago, this is not that long ago, right. um, we went to a diabetes support group, and guess where that took place? Where? Yeah, old country buffet. <laughs> Darn it. So I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if they have those still around. Do those still exist? I think I think there are at least yeah in the Midwest here. I'm pretty sure they. Well, it may I don't know may, maybe not, but I, I remember going there. Not that you know back. I was gonna yeah. say not that long ago. Yeah, I was because I haven't been in a restaurant in 15 years. But uh, yeah, old country buffet. <laughs> Yeah, that it just blew my mind because Old Country Buffet, I mean, I just, the support group took place there, but not only that, even if the support group took place there, we weren't eating salads. I mean, they were there so we could, and they basically told us straight up, you can eat whatever you want. Mm. Whatever you want, no matter, it, it makes no difference. Like, you just have to, the traditional theory of diabetes, I mean, I, and I hope this isn't prevalent, but I imagine probably is considering those like, 450 million people with diabetes is eat whatever you want, just medicate the symptoms. In other words, play the balancing act of, I mean, I, and I did this for so long. I mean, it's, and I'm, I became an expert at it, which is you eat, you become a carb counter, and if you have something that's 50 carbs, if your ratio is 10 to 1, you take five units and then you're back down to where you need to be. And you play that game with everything. Pineapple has a hundred, you get ten units, and it's just like you can eat whatever you want, and that's that's the propaganda. I mean, that's the, that's what they tell you. So, yeah, and because I remember looking at you know when we before we uh, we talked, you know, I always send out a questionnaire to the clients that I'm going to do consultations and stuff with, and I remember seeing, and this has been consistent <clears throat> when I work with people I have I call it I just call it sugar metabolism issue. Yes, sir. Um, and I noticed that, that that's the starch is like such an addiction you know that's the starches and the uh, you talking about the chips and, and, and those terrible combinations and it's like all of that but stay away from fruit you know and uh, and that, that always kind of blows my mind because then once the fruit is integrated in 
and the transition is dealt with you start to clear out you know the colon a little bit of all that old slimy stuff uh it, it can totally shift everything you know and it's not that overnight you're off of all your whatever medication all that kind of stuff and i don't you know and and of course i don't give medical advice i just i give friendly advice <laughs> you people do what they want to do but uh if if i were to you know but i say if i were to do these things i would transition you know i wouldn't just jump off of something you've been doing something for years and years of your life it's like well you know, transit transition but i remember you saying you had uh uh you you had you had really even thought about that yet you uh, with the with the uh with the insulin like to like okay what what does it take to really you know, like what happens if you don't do it you know it's like that is there a lot of uh negative symptoms and that kind of thing and, and a lot of people that i've uh that i've worked with you know, they hadn't they were so scared from the propaganda that they had never really considered well, what would happen you know if i'm if i'm staying away from the starch and the, well the comp you know the complex carbohydrates i'm staying away from that stuff and uh and then sort of decrease the the, the drugs a little bit what happened, you know, uh, and, uh, and that, you know, and so that was, uh, uh so I remember that we had kind of left off there when, when we were talking, then I was happy when you, you had posted up in the forum saying that you had really like drastically decreased the amount of the drug, the drugs that you were taking. Yeah. And, and it's funny by the way, that it's just, blows my mind. I mean, I try not to think about it, although sometimes it's nice to reflect on this because <laughs> mm. it's, it's a story, right? People are inspired by that, but it's like, well, if you can eat anything, why don't you just eat fruit instead of right. rice pilaf or something like that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, right. Or uh, you know, if, if you can have whatever you want and just dose it with insulin, if you're playing the blood sugar game, Right. What you're, doing. what you're doing, yeah. Why you eat anything? Why why is fruit bad? Why why is fruit have more sugar? First of all, well, we know how that goes. I mean mm -hmm. fruit doesn't have more sugar, it just has a different type of sugar. Right. Well, that uh as as the uh theory goes, and I, I agree with, with Dr. Morris on this, the the fructose diffuses directly into the cells. It doesn't have to be carried in. And uh so that's why the, the fruit is far superior to use because then on top of that, as Eric says, uh, that's the only thing that really truly creates, uh, you know, real human blood is the fruits. And uh, you use the vegetables to help, you know, clean and the mineral salts of the vegetables and clean the, the uh, on the cellular level, as well as, the, you know, mucus broom in the uh, intestines to clear out all the all the waste. And uh uh, yeah, and so, uh, so so right now. So where are you at with your transition right now? What kinds of things are you are you eating and and, and all of that? So, um, you know, um, right now I would say I'm trying to think back just a little bit. When I first did, um, when I was, the summer was beginning, I said I was going to only do fruit. And it's funny because that's what I did when I first, and, and this, well, the direct answer is I'm doing fruits and, and simple salads. That's mm -hmm. the short answer. Mm -hmm. um, but it just reminds me when I first went mucusless, when I, when I really, when I understood this book, when I read this book, and actually what I mean is when I read it, but I didn't understand it. Uh, and I played with it and I left the tree of life and I started doing all fruits and I just want to touch on this because It's just it just again. It's just one of those things that I reflect on and I just laugh But I'm thankful I got through it is I went all fruit pretty much when I got home from Arizona for the summer because the summer in Chicago is Incredibly beautiful in my opinion one of the best times if not the only thing. That's the joke um, but I had pretty much all fruits, and then for a couple months, or, and uh, I had a severe relapse. I had like, I, like, like fifty pizzas or something mm -hmm. like that, like frozen pizzas or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I would, yeah, I mean, I made them better 
right? But I, I, food is very, very powerful. And Eric says that, and I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I experimented with it, and I highly recommend that no one does that. And I think you're probably on par with that too. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the whole Woodstock thing. But like fruitarians, I, I think even if you're a fruitarian for like 10 years, you got to be careful because yeah. it'll creep up on you. And you'll have that. You'll have that. I'm like, wow, you're like, I really want some chocolate or yeah. something. 10 yeah. years later, like, and you're like, where'd that come from? I've been eating oranges for and apples for the last 10 years. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I try not to be the, the I told you so guy, but it's hard not to be because I'm kind of that voice of that, that mediating principle between, you know, just gluttonous standard, you know, sad veganism and a, a sort of an extremist fruitarian ideal, which may be an idealized kind of thing. And the deceptiveness of how good you can feel doing a fruit fast or eating nothing but fruit for periods of time. Uh, but if the proper transitional, not only physical, but also mental, if the proper transition hasn't been applied, just like you said, the, uh, the, the relapse and the cravings and all that stuff can be uh, uh, just in insane. You just uh, you where you, you as soon as you think because there's there's something so humbling about practicing a mucus diet. <laughs> as soon as you think that you reached it and you've got there, like ah man, I'm never gonna eat such and such again. I've made it. That's when Mother Nature comes and says, "You ain't no, no you're, not, you're not special. <laughs> you got work to do." And uh, so, really learning how to find that balance, you know, find that that rational balance where you're not just uh, eating ha haphazardly and you don't it, with no consciousness of the mixtures and just eating any old vegan thing or any old whatever uh, versus getting carried away with feeling good for a period of time and then pushing yourself too far. Uh, and I even say that there's the danger is pushing yourself to uh, like a point. There's a point of no return along the the extremist fruit path that you can push yourself to and where before you even really start to feel the negative symptoms of that's in store for you it's it's almost like it's too late it's like you you can't easily just take a step back and start transitioning you have to really be almost surgical with how you transition back to balance yourself out and and you know and actually i work with a lot of people that that's their issue you know because i've kind of is <laughs> uh uh is like because vegans don't like me because they want to they want to be patted on the back for just being vegan you know they they just want to you know they, they're talking about like okay if we put uh we put this cauliflower and batter and and deep fry it it'll taste just like fried chicken i mean that's the, the a lot of the, the vegans uh, or, or on that level and then uh so i've kind of found that i've i can work with a lot of people that have you know work with dr morris and, and other people that have tried to be like 100 percent fruit for periods of time but then they get to a point where they like man i can't they don't even want to admit it publicly but they can't go any further <laughs> it's like they went as far as they could go for that particular period of time and that's where it's like, okay, now, now instead of going all the way back to your old diet or having a, I hate, you know, that cheat day concept and the cheat day is like you, eating things that you used to eat years ago. It's like, instead of doing that, why don't you step back to something that's in the middle? Try some baked banana, try some, some, some you know, baked and stewed fruit or have a, a you know, baked a big salad and some, uh, you know, baked acorn squash, you know, things that are cooked and mucus free. Uh, sure. But and, and it's hard when the, the raw foodist uh, dogma has been so ingrained to the point where I've, where I've had people that have actually had fear, had fear of cooked food to the point like they needed it. They needed to use it for their transition because they were really not ready you know to kind of go any further on, on on that raw tip but there was an actual mental fear that had been built up 
of uh, of have just the smallest amount of cooked mucus free foods and so i find that to be a problem so i try to i try to bridge that gap and uh that's that's a really really good point actually do, do you mind if i just stress that real quick yeah go ahead yeah because um it's funny that i mean there are a lot of things i wanted to address in fact what i should start doing is taking notes but <laughs> um the and that raw food thing i mean that i can i can tell you from experience because i i am i i, I i'm not going to say i identify as that because again this is like you know, that's like an ego thing it's like i don't identify as raw foodist but a lot of the meals that i do um resonate with and, and do consume are raw i mean that was my introduction into this whole healing thing i mean like more or less so I resonate with raw, and I want to be a raw chef. I mean, that's what I'm going to Philly for in a couple of days to learn how to do. I mean, but it's always been challenging for me because there's a difference between it's kind of like fitness and health, right? There's a difference between being fit and then being healthy. Yeah. But, um, complete difference, and most people don't understand the difference. And for example, you could be Michael Phelps. I've read about his diet. Sometimes he eats like. 10,000 cal like calories a day of like waffles and spaghetti and it's like oh well just because I work out four times a day right but yeah he's ripped he has a great body but he might have a heart attack and just fall down one day because yeah. yeah right and with raw food it, it, it is that and it's been conflictual for me because the food itself like for example banana ice cream is a staple right that that's a big thing if you make it in the champions juice it's a big right. thing it's better than dairy right it is but but it's been hard for me to try and market those things because i know deep down that the truth is that i might not eat that stuff you know what i mean like the stuff that i serve the stuff that i want to make for other people yeah I probably won't eat and that's you know and that includes well, and, and the Go ahead. And to add to that real quick, to, for me, that's that's what's beautiful about mucusless diet healing system and practicing the mucusless diet because it's it's an understood fact that you're not going to eat the same way in year one, two, three, four, or five that you eat in year 15, 20, 30. You know, it, it changes. And uh, and one of the greatest examples of, of what you're talking about was uh, Brother Air was doing – he, you know, about eight months into one of his ju long fast, you know, his ju long juice fast, and he's been fasting for eight months uh, with long periods of, of dry fasting inter, uh, interspersed in there. But he was still cooking mucusless menus for his family. So he's fasting, yet he's cooking uh, steamed vegetables and making the salads and the baked acorn squashes and the spaghetti squash. He's, you know, the mucusless diet transitional stuff uh he's cooking that for for his family you know and so that I, I i want that i want things to get to a point where that's just so understood that everybody's on a different path and in a, at a different level yet the principles are the same that's what we share we share the principles but we're rarely ever going to be on the same page in terms of our transitions lining up with one another because it's we our physiologies are too different I completely agree with that. And it's funny because I was like rehearsing it outside. I was like, before we do this, like, what are some of the things I want to talk about? And that was one of them because it was like, it's weird. Like, I call it rehearsing, but like some people might call it insanity. It's like, dude, are you talking to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. Um, it, which was exactly the same thing you just said, which is it's so individualized and personalized that it's such a beautiful thing. And the mucusless diet healing system. I think, in my opinion, and maybe you too agree with me, is it's one of the, in, for me, it's it's probably the only thing, there's two things I want to talk about. One, it's the only thing that um, allows you to, it's it's literally a goal achievement system. Mm, I've, noticed, yeah. like, I've never been able to achieve goals in my life, in my past life, I've been so mm, bad at it, yeah. and I realized one day, I'm like, this is that. The mucusless diet healing system is a gradual way to achieve any goal. Right. Because you yeah. go fast, you go slow. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, uh, what's his name? Um, 
Brian Tracy, you know him, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is like his goal setting achievement system called yeah. something else. Right. Like this is how you do it. And this is the one thing that's taught me to gradually move towards things rather than be an extremist because I've always done that in the past, which is like, I'm going to do fruit for a whole summer. Right. But I'm just going to fast for 30 days and I've never done it before in my life. That's been my life history before this. Now I take small steps in every area of my life and, and I'm really starting to see it improve. So I'm really happy and thankful for that. And like you said, it's, it's, you can't ask someone else. You can ask someone else what they're doing for reference, but I wouldn't get attached to it because at the end of the day, this system teaches you the most important thing. How to, in my opinion, it's probably the most important thing in life, which is how to listen to your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. How to be your own compass, which is the most important tool in, in any part of life, I think. Yeah. But, Another story from another time, but a little philosophical. But I think that's great. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's that's what, that's kind of what we do because people <laughs> surprised because they're always waiting. And we talk about food sometimes, but we often are talking about the ideas because once you are looking at things differently, then uh, the the paradigm shifts and and things change. And what I like to try to do is get people to a point where the mucusless mindset is just a part of your life. So you, it's not, you don't have to think about, okay, what's the specific recipe or what's this, uh, you know, all this kind of reductivism. It's like you walk into a kitchen and you're empowered to, uh, uh, to, to just create and have fun, explore different things. Cause you know, the principles, once you know the principles, uh, with you know the food combining and the order that you eat and the amount of time you're supposed to eat during the day, all these things that's outlined in the Mucus Diet Healing System book. You know, once you know that, then to me it's fun. It's just fun exploring and improvising, making variations. You know, I've actually uh, just got done recording uh, some food preparation videos, which I'd never <laughs> done before. Yeah. It's awesome. me. It still blows my mind because you had told me, you know, 20 years ago or even when I started the diet that I would be making food preparation videos. You know, I'd have just I'd have just laughed you out the room. But it's uh, so it's still that out of all the crazy things I've done in my life. That's one that still blows my mind for some reason. Like, man, if people actually want to see me prepare food, that just. You know. But uh, but that was one thing that I really talk about and what I want to bring to the table that we're, that'd be different from what I do versus what I've ever seen anybody else talk about in their food preparation videos is the, uh, the ability to do variations on the fly, you know, in an improvisatory, see, I'm an improviser. Uh, and I love that. And in my musical life, that's what I'm the best at is just improvisation and coming up with things in the moment. And uh, and in order to do that, you have to know the rules. You know, so in order for me to improvise music, I have to know the basics. You know, I have to know my, my scales and harmony and all those kind of things. But once I know those basics, uh, then I'm just listening to my inner ear and allowing what's in my ear uh, to come out. And it's the re and I've had to have removed the obstruction. See, the practice part of making music is. I'm removing the obstruction, all those hours that I sit there practicing or if anybody is doing any, any kind of art that you're working on something, you're removing obstruction. And when that obstruction is removed, then the improvisation can flow. It's, you know, it's like the light of the universe flows in you and out of you, you know, and through you. Uh, and so that's really what I want to get across, at least in my particular uh, food preparation videos is that the variation that you can take one item but you can make little variations that make significant changes to it so that from one recipe or one approach to an item you can really make i mean dozens of of different variations uh, of that you know of that item and uh and but 
but that's that's what i love about just just mucus's diet when you really allow yourself to get into the uh, uh the evolutional nature you know the, the nature of variation with that and just uh just really explore uh, mm, i'm trying to yeah that that's beautiful i mean I, I think that would help a lot of people because everybody you know everybody starts out rigid right i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> got to do it a certain way, got to be perfectionism. Right. right. And it's like the, the, the crown jewel of perfectionism. That's me. I've always mm -hmm. tried to do that. Thank God I'm letting that go. But, you know, a good example of that is is when I was just, and, and it just, now, again, I'm, I'm much more simpler, I think. I, like, I don't need that much. Like, sometimes I'll just have a small salad a day. Sometimes I'll have nothing. I just ended a 14-day water fast. It's like, I, you know, again, do it. I, I think people should be supervised but and slowly move up to that. But I was at, what's that one place that serves fast food Asian? What is it called? Um, what, Panda Express? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm at an <laughs> I'm practicing the music, mucus list ideas. I consider myself identify with it. It was probably like, I don't know, maybe like six, maybe a year, a year ago or something like that. I'm at an airport and I, I was like, what am I going to eat? And I like have the book and I go to McDonald's, get a salad, and then just go to Panda, get steamed vegetables, and just put that on top. And it worked out perfectly. And I was like, wow, that's improv. And I think I made a post about that. And that's improv 101. It's just like I had no idea. It didn't need to be perfect. I just found it. You know, mm. it's possible. Maybe they have, but it didn't. Like the mucus society healing system more or less just puts me at ease. Yeah. Rather than add stress, and I think that's a huge, huge discovery mm. that, I think that people can only know by experience. And so, I'm glad you touched on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, it, once you got the foundations down, you can. Go in the kitchen downstairs and make anything. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, what what's here? <laughs> it's like okay, let's the banana. There's an apple. There's some, some spinach. There's a, there's a squash. There, you know, it's, it's zucchini. It's and uh, and the the idea of of allowing yourself to be in a particular period uh, where. Because I often, and I think I need to do some more writing on this to even clarify this more. Because I know I talk about it, but I don't. I'm not sure if people really get it. But it's like, it's okay to do several months uh, mucus lean, or so, you know, that's just on some of those mucus lean items. But then do a couple months raw and mucusless. Now you're okay, raw and mucusless. Just like. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like M Michael Jordan once said, when a kid asked him, like, can you fly? And Michael Jordan said, for a little while. You know, you can fly for a little while. You can be raw and mucusless for a little while. You can juice fast for a little while. You can water fast for a while. Uh, you can do these things for a while, but there is a profound transformation that can occur when you start to line up these various periods uh, or, or I even call them modes, or periods, but when you start to systematically line them up, you can see that, that you will get further and further every time you, you sort of commit yourself to, to a particular mode. It's like, okay, right now I'm eating, I'm going to just, I'm going to wear out this cooked acorn squash and salad, or I'm going to wear out this baked banana or w whatever it is you're wearing out. Then it's okay. Now I'm going to do a period of, of raw mucusless or maybe just raw fruits or, uh, mm -hmm. or fasting or whatever but to, but to really but then at some point it's okay to co to go back you know, go back to those that that, that cook period uh, or even if you start having the cravings and you find uh oh um getting into some of the processed vegan stuff that's okay you know uh in terms of the transition get it out of your system uh mm -hmm. that's that was a methodology that that I, that I really learned from from brother air because he he talked about that in uh, in his example is 10 years into really vigorously practicing the mucus diet he went through uh, a, a fairly long period of having toast where he so in the regular part of the day it would just be classic mucus diet you know fruit in the afternoon 
uh, and then a, and a salad in the evening. And then he would then at at some point he would tag on to that uh, the uh, well well toasted bread uh, with peanut butter and he, and jelly on it. Yeah. That, was, that was his thing. Now I could I couldn't physiologically do that. I was unable so I was unable to do that even a couple years into the, into practicing. But there were things that I was able to eat that Brother Air could never eat. So it's not like, oh, I'm that someone's better because it's everybody's physiology is different. And a lot of that's based on what they used to eat, the amount of acids and stuff that that are in the in the system after you start the cleanse. And um, and so, you know, I guess the other example where Brother Air, he's never had an avocado in his life. Uh, and I went through a period. It was more for experimentational purposes, so I could talk about it. But I, I did go through a little period of, uh, of, of an avocado period, you know, where I'm like, okay, let me really see what this does physiologically, because uh, we talk about it all the time. So I really want to be able to, uh, you know, give give an honest analysis. So you know, so and that's what becomes fun for me. Then when we're all sitting around to get together. Uh, that's like the campfire stories where, where we we talk about the different periods that we had or the crazy, you know, we talk about the crazy periods or the good periods, you know, we could look fondly on, like, man, I did this year long fast and that was great. Or I did, uh, then sometimes you look back and like, man, I got caught up in this soy burger period and knocked me out. You know, it's just, that becomes part of the, the stories that we tell uh, uh, re- retrospectively, but uh, the principle is always always transitioning forward always uh you know getting that stuff out of course we do and, and recommend that people get into the animas you know we a lot of us do lemon juice and distilled water animas and i'm not sure if you you can uh talk about some of your experiences in the anima realm if, if you got into that but uh you know but that's it's just, it's just so it's, it's all about the variation and as you put it learning to listen to your body and, and you really it's, it's it really is about getting deeper into yourself to the point where uh all of this, these things that we talk about become second nature you don't have to think about it you know you feel it uh you uh, essentially have to unobstruct your intuition because if, if you start off right away with just just okay i'm just going to eat what i feel like eating my intuition that's not going to work because you still you're still addicted to, to pus and and mucus forming food so you first have to cleanse yourself using the mechanics of the mucus diet but then you get to a point where once those mechanics are instilled in you then you can let go and and all of a sudden you find yourself just naturally making choices that that gets you closer and closer to, as you said, this, you know, these, these goals, you know, these higher uh, levels of eating. Yeah, totally. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, yeah. And again, you know, I, I don't know. Sometimes I have a tendency to, 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 to be very reflective. So I feel like a life is, is more like, I don't know. One of the big epiphanies that I had when, and when I was, is life is more than what you eat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could say it's just what you breathe. I mean, in, in Earth's terms, but that's not what I mean. What I mean is, is a deeper concept. It's, and and the mucus diet system, I think, is a great tool for that. One of the best is that it helps you, or at least it helps me, to achieve the highest level of, of life that I possibly can have. And that's through personal development, and I guess it's just like it, everybody. It all starts out with what's on your plate, right? Like mm-hmm. that's how it starts, right? I mean, I, and I embrace that. I'm okay with that. And I, in fact, if I was teaching it, maybe I will someday. But you are. I mean, I would almost, you know, like it's laughable because it's in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it matters, mm-hmm. but I think there's. I think you have to have the whole body, the whole the emotions, the yeah, have to, the, the emotional part, the spiritual part, the mental, mental part, the physical part. They all have to be aligned, and they have to be working synergistically. And if and there's probably other components of health 
but if those aren't, I just see it as a whole holistic um, kind of skeleton where if, if there's something missing in your life, um, you know what I mean? Like you can eat the perfect, most perfect diet in the world, but I mean, who cares? I mean, it, you're not, right, right. You end up feeling superior, and you think you're better. You're gonna vote on that whole realm of I have this like superiority complex where I think I'm better because I'm eating certain foods, and no one's gonna to want to be around you. And I've gone, I've gone down that, and then mm -hmm. it's like acceptance, and people start to not want to be around you, and it's like it's all. I feel like I don't know. It's just it's. <laughs> it's a it's a com it's a tumultuous path, but nonetheless, I think like if you can um, go down it, but then uh, jump out out. I mean, I'm trying to think. Go down the sidewalk, go down the path, right, and then just once, and then just walk outside and, and watch it, and then observe it. But you don't have to be in it forever. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, I don't know what I'm I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Right, right. Well, I, I'll read a. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna read a quote from the Mucus's Diet book, and uh, is it? Is it can you see that all right, or is it flashing? <laughs> it's flashing, but I can. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. That's strange, but uh, it says, "But you, I, and others who have learned this greatest and most important truth of life." are the only ones in existence today who are in fact and not by mind only out of the road of darkness and unconscious suicide and into the light of the new civilization, the light of a physical regeneration as the foundation of mental and spiritual re revelation, rejuvenation, like uh, progress to the uh, light of a superior, uh, that is to say, a spiritual world. And uh, that is, and it's like, you know, because some sometimes folks will will uh, they'll either ask for me, oh, we'll do do a spiritual video, or you know, they'll want to hear my opinions on uh, you know, supernatural things and metaphysical concepts and religious ideals and all this kind of stuff. And uh, and sometimes I get into it, and I'm sure as as you. I foresee talking more about those kind of things in, in, as I as things progress, and you know I'm I'm just uh, inspired to talk about what I feel is is needed, which is almost always comes from an uh, an intuitive standpoint. So, and I, I don't like to just talk about a lot of stuff that other people are, are talking about. And when 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 I started talking about transition nobody was talking about transition out there. Everybody was talking about, you know, be a hundred percent raw tomorrow and, you know, one week to raw and, and uh, eat nothing more fruit and, you know, 40 day water fast. And it was always these sort of huge things as opposed to what about, a, what about transitioning? You know, what about tur turning your life into a perpetual uh, a, a transition and of evolutional growth and then then people try to misread or interpret that as to to uh accuse me of saying that oh just eat crap for you know the the transition should only take a year or two you know and you'll be eating crap for the rest of your life and, and they're missing the point of what i think Eric's point was which is one of uh of a pro progressive evolutional change that 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 doesn't stop you know so it, so there's always a higher level so you get to a 100 percent raw mucus list then there's fasting levels that are untapped and there's uh levels of of the amount of sun that that we would get and the uh the the amount of sleep that we don't need when we the cleaner we get i mean there's always <laughs> there's always something else uh, but people really have this fixation on wanting to get to get to this ultimate thing as soon as possible. And when that happens, you, you miss out on the journey, which, in my opinion, that's the whole thing, the whole learning process. And uh, the, the real experience of what we're doing is within the journey and uh, really, you know, savor even the ups and the downs and 
the, the hard times and the good times, you know, but, but really observing and savoring and appreciating this whole process, the whole transition, uh, which to me is just synonymous for life itself. I mean, the way that I use transition, I could just say life. I was saying mucus yeah, for life. I, I would call what you just said self love. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it, it's yeah. not self criticism. It's self love. It's not. Oh, I wish I could do this better. It's I'm happy where I'm at, and it's only getting better and better. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I have to be. You know what I mean? Like, and I can see what I don't want to cut you off. If you want to? Mm, I'll do it. But there's, I think, and I, I understand where that misinterpretation of what you just said could could come up like for mm. example well yeah and and actually i love your opinion but it's like the transition could theoretically take a lifetime right i mean a lifetime of transition yeah. is a possibility when there's if you think about it from air it's kind of depending on how you interpret it like generations and generations of bad choices and so forth right it could take a while but I guess I could see where people might interpret that as rationalization for continuing to make bad choices mm -hmm. or, or mucus lean or you know what I mean? Like right. rationalization for, for not stepping up your game and being more consistent and, and cleaning yourself up and doing it quickly. I could understand that, but I, you know, I don't necessarily take either side because I don't I, I don't know I mean it's like yes I, I feel like we're we have a duty to clean ourselves and the next generations for the future and uh, keep our bloodline uh, intact but it's like I don't know if there's any particular way to do that I think we can do I, I don't know you know I, what what's your opinion because like, some people might be like well that's kind of like laid back that's not really like definitive well, yeah, I mean, a lot of that first, it depends on how you <clears throat> define transition. And so I define transition as a natural law, not a choice. So that's where I differ from every from most people, because they're looking at transition like like you have a choice in the matter where it's like, OK, I could I could choose to uh, transition or I could maybe with my win, uh, willpower and the power of my mind, I could just skip over that pesky transition and just be uh uh you know get get there as soon as possible you know there there's sort of and Eric even addresses this the people that put too much into the mind thing you know the mind games and the mental uh dynamics and healing of thinking that it's all psychosomatic and uh, like i wrote in the forum a while back when people when this kind of came up and people were saying, oh, well, it's it's all psychosomatic. It's just the mind. And then I said, well, if it's all just the mind, then is it possible for a, a one year old toddler to use their mind to unfold their physiology at a rapid rate to where they could unfold into adulthood within two weeks just using their mind? Now, I'm not saying it's I'm not even saying it's not possible. I just haven't met the one year old child that has the mental capacity and ability to do that. What nature has shown us is that it takes time, that the evolution from being a being an embryo into a baby, into a child, into an adult, these things evolve and unfold naturally over time uh the seasons if if you live in a part of the world that has seasons it it evolves and changes over time if there's no seasons there there's the uh, a tree doesn't start big it grows and evolves you can't rush the tree <laughs> well you're gonna like, hurry up tree fa transition faster you're not going no the tree i bet you the tree's gonna grow at the rate that it's gonna grow at so for me, the transition means getting in line with nature, with it's it's all it's already these laws are already out here. You know, the, these laws of, uh, of physiology are the decisions that we have to make is do we 
do, do we get into that? Do we uh, is that a goal for us to transition ourselves to try and get in line with Mother Nature or what some you know, I use the term Mother Nature and other people will use the word universe or God or the divine or whatever. But do you get in line with that uh, or do you fight against that? And that for me, that's that's what pus and mucus eating is doing. You're fighting against nature. You're fighting against the, the divine. Uh, what Arid's technology gives us is a way to uh, gradually get ourselves into, as he would even you know, maybe call it the, like a divine diet to live a divine life. Uh, which is what should be normal. So it's not it's not extraordinary. It's not supposed to be extraordinary. It is uh, really just getting just just trying to yeah. be normal, you know, trying to be in line with uh, with nature's laws. So so that's so for me, transition is not a choice. It, it's just a matter. It's a matter of nature, natural law, cause and effect uh you know some people you say call, call you can look at cause and effect you can call it karma whatever you call that uh that dynamic where from one point from one perspective there there if if you come from sort of a buddhist mentality that says there's nothing there's no such thing as good and bad it's all just different it's all consciousness and it's experiences that, that if, you know if you use that type of perspective okay i can i can deal with that cause and effect is still part of it and so I can I can say, well, you know, you, you live your life eating nothing but pizza and cake and, and all that kind of stuff. And we can say, OK, well, that's you, you could have the opinion that, oh, well, that's, that's not bad. That's that's just what this spiritual being decided to do with their life was <laughs> the thing is that it's cause and it's cause and effect. So when that person perishes from breaking natural laws as, as a result of their diet then then don't then don't cry you know don't just un, don't cry for them just understand i'm not you know this i'm just I'm saying that to make a point that we got to understand that it's all uh it's all cause and effect on this plane of existence where i know a lot of other people they want to give that power to something else they want to well no it's just it's it was it was their time you know, they, they passed or they going through something. It's like, no, it was it was it was their their time based on laws of nature. You know, there, there's no mysticism to a lot of this, you know, when it when it comes to the cause and effect. And uh, so that's that's what I what I try to get over where it's like, OK, let's we this isn't the whole this isn't the whole answer. This isn't everything but this is this is a vital first step and you can't skip the first step you know we this this is a missing link and piece that we need to get a hold on so that we can then move into these uh these other whatever it is that that, that we're supposed to be i mean that's what i'm trying to explore because i'm not saying that i know what we're supposed to do but i know we're not supposed to be doing what we're doing in terms of humanity and this uh very degenerate level of existence um i know that we're you know we're, we're not supposed to really do this at least for, for too much for very long and uh so the more of us that start to uh, abide by nature's laws then the, the world will try would literally start to transform around us and and the interesting thing that that's going to happen is we're going to see this divide and it's already happening but it's going to be the people going down the natural path that's trying to get in line with nature and then on the other hand it's going to be total extremism and mucus worship death worship uh you know the uh, man versus food epic mealtime reality you know people dying of uh you know all kinds of chronic illnesses in their 20s and 30s and uh yeah. but, but you know but they had to you know they, they had to have that double triple bypass burger you know and uh, <laughs> and, uh wow yeah 
that's that's an idea. And well, there's a lot of things, but I'm trying to call out one thing. There's one part that I I think you were talking about how the rigidity of I don't, I don't recall I don't remember exactly, but come back to that if, if it floats back around but yeah I'm, I'm, I mean I understand what you're saying yeah I mean there's there's uh, that's a good answer it's really a thorough answer and I think you explained it well so thank you I mean because a lot of people get stuck there um, and it's unfortunate because it is the first step it's a catalyst and I've always believed that and it's like especially when I went to Woodstock um, it's like it it was very interesting to me because when I went to Woodstock Food Festival, and I love the festival. It was, it was, it was, I mean, those communities are really great places, to, I think, to meet friends, even if it's if someone who's trying fruit for a first day. They've never eaten fruit in their life, and they want to do a fruit festival for a week. Who cares, you know? For me, that's practicing non-judgment and self-love and love for others, and just like, so that's important for me. And like when I when I went there, however, I noticed there was like a lot of focus on food. Almost everything was focused on food. Not only was there no focus on transition, there was no focus on any other part, like emotion, spirituality, um, like anything within, you know, like outside of the plate. It was just how many calories should you day? What do you need to use a toothbrush? Do you not? Um, there was like maybe one or two that had like one or two presenters who, to be honest, is just why, which is why I went. I went for the vision board, which is really important to me because mm. it's achieving the life I want, which is mm. joy, ultimate joy, health, and happiness. That is much more important to me than you know how many calories should I get? Is raw sustainable? But I understand there's different people and for different stages. Yeah. So again, it was just an opportunity to see that it's not a bad thing because a lot of people are there, so they need that. But at the same time, I wish they had a little more focus. And I wish everybody had a little more focus on what happens as a result of this path, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, yeah, first you start eating salads, but but what's what are you not telling me? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. what's going to happen to me? How is my life going to change by consuming these things? And, and in essence, consuming other things besides food for your life, um, which is a little more, like, deep, I guess, is what I'm... You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not... I just wish there was more focus on that, like, mental, spiritual, emotional stuff and happiness and just well-being rather than you know, like <laughs> high quality fruits and durian parties but nonetheless <laughs> it, it's 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 all good <laughs> yeah. so, so how was it so so you uh uh so so yeah so just how what's your review of the festival i mean just how did uh how, how did yeah. you enjoy the the whole uh woodstock fruit festival really really great place and um if I didn't say it already, I think it's wonderful. Um, I think it's it's a it's a place like no other because it's one of the few places I think maybe in the U.S. But I mean, the California has lots of fruit, but in New York, it's just it's it's only like six hundred people, so it's pretty small. And it's just like you hang out there for a week, you get to know everybody, you share fruit, you share life, you have fun, and you take a step away from the everyday stresses of life, which I think is important, um, especially the stress you put on yourself, which is probably most of it. Um, but uh, yeah, great festival, great people. I would definitely go back. I'd recommend it to everybody. Um, and I, you know, I, think I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't change a thing. So. Except for that you guys should go next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I, I was... Uh... Uh, I'd actually considered going and there was a, a couple folks in the mucus free community that have been trying to get me and brother air to go to the, the Woodstock fruit festival and, uh, and just kind of just share the, the mucus free vibe because, uh, heard there's not a whole lot of, 
the, the, the mucus free perspective. There's a lot of raw perspectives and vegan perspectives and, and things, but not a, not a whole lot of uh, what what we bring to the table. So we will, uh, you know, maybe maybe next year, uh, maybe next year we will we will try to make it make it on down there. And uh, yeah, it's been interesting. We were we were talking about. The, <laughs> the the drama you know the the drama that sometimes surrounds then there was a little bit of drama last year that surrounded the the woodstock fruit festival and then just raw foodism in general you know there's uh sometimes i know last year there was someone that made a video that was talking that that was like a part of the festival that was going to give a presentation but then did a kind of a nasty video where they said a lot of negative things about the festival and they got like revoked like man don't you know you can't come here you over here talking all this mess about the festival and then he came back and did these tearful videos and stuff and so but it's it's this i, I just noticed that that there's this dramatic thing that sometimes it's not to say that there's there's yeah we we got a we got our drama in the mucus free community but in comparison to what I've seen in, in the raw food circles and, and some of that stuff, it's like this is a whole different level of drama that uh, that's over there. And I guess some of it, it they it, it, folks have tried to use it to promote their channels and, and the message and that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I, I see a lot of that is still based in a, in more of a mucus type of thing. You know, it's, it's like like the stimulant. Of uh, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on this here and cut somebody out, and then you know, create these little these little wars and stuff. And we've always we've tried to stay out of that, just just kind of watch watch from afar and <laughs> say. Um, that's a really good, you know. I just want to chime in. That's a really good uh, point that I just wanted to touch on. I uh, is that because I think it's important. Is that, and I think I. I I have a feeling I took this from you. I don't remember what video. Can you see me? Is that? Uh, can you see me? I can't really see you. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. If you can see me, I'll just leave it. Um, but it was weird because it was like, um, okay. So yeah, I was basically saying that. Um, I think I just leave you. Um, Oh, because this one was important. <laughs> um, I know it was important. It's coming back. Um, About the stimulation of us and this stuff. Yeah, you're a Woodstock or something. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's like it's when I first. I think this is something that's so important, but it's it's not talked about enough. Is because. When you find out about the mucus diet, or just healing in general and living a life of, of whatever you want to call it, you don't need the labels, but mm -hmm. once once that starts to dawn on you, I think it's really, really, and I, I'm still trying to do it, and it's extremely hard. It's living in the duality of life, like being able to support yourself and live a mucus life, mucus, mucus life, I would say lifestyle is probably mm -hmm. a better word. In other words, like, how do you not, how do you live a life of happiness, health, and, and, and wealth, whatever that means to you? Mm -hmm. I would consider it just being comfortable to whatever your standards are. Um, and not be plugged into the system of mucus, you know what I mean? So it's like, I've really been trying, it's been my life struggle. It's like, well, how do I make, in other words, how do you make a living? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, and live a life of peace and tranquility. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's hard because it's like traditional methodology says you have to go out and get a job and you have to wear a suit and tie and you have to be plugged into that. And there's restaurants everywhere and there's people and there's social functions and there's birthdays right. and cakes and there's everywhere you go. And it's like, no, I just want to live on a farm. Well, yeah, living on a farm is great. But I also want to live above the poverty line. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So like, how do you do both? I, I was curious if maybe I, I've been struggling with that. I was yeah. curious if you could touch on that. Yeah, that's you know, I talk about that a lot with uh 
<laughs> Brother Air, you know, we, we talk about the uh, <clears throat> the amount of, of carnival, you know, the carnivorism and, and how how uh, how much do we inter uh, interact with carnivores, you know, where I don't have a lot of. And it's not that I even forced them out. It's just it was a vibrational thing with me where in, as far as socializing, I pretty much mostly only socialize with people that are plant based. A lot of those people happen to practice a mucus diet. Uh, that's just where my vibration is at. Now, Brother Air, he still tried to maintain some of his relationships from, from his pus and mucus days. And so he and, and musicians and stuff that would be sort of along the, uh, the pus and mucus type of vibration. But it would it would wear on him and, and you get, uh, you know, it wears you out and makes you tired because the vibrations aren't lining up properly. And um, and so it's it's that it's a huge challenge. Each person has to find their own way through it. And part of my mission is to develop things to a point where eventually we can be self-sustainable as a community. You know, down and this is way visionary. You know, don't I'm I'm terrible. I know I, I'm <laughs> I'm good at visualizing what's gonna happen, but I'm terrible at giving a time prediction. So this might take 30, 40, 50 years. I have no clue. But I know that it will happen, that eventually we're gonna have a situation where we can we can pool our resources together and, and live the way we wanna live. But we have to get ourselves clean enough first. That's one thing that I notice when people do that. Uh, and there's been a lot of people that are like, ah, we, we should you know, get some land and get the mucus community and all that stuff. But where what there's certain things that have to be in place first, in our opinion, for for we do something like that, because we we got to get have a certain level of cleanliness up front. And I, w I look at it like, you know, I live in the Midwest. I want to leave all my waste here, you know, all the, the most toxic of my waste that's in my system. I want to use the, the Midwestern toilet and leave that behind. I don't want to go someplace nice and tropical and new and and uh, and bring a bunch of of uh, uneliminated toxic waste from generations ago. Uh, I don't want to bring that there and defile a new place. Let me this is a this is a great place. It's a great toilet where I you know, in the Midwest United States, a excellent toilet. Uh, leave that waste behind here and then when it's time to make that move to uh to uh, uh, uh to, to prettier pastures then we will uh we will do that but as you know but as far as just dealing with the social dynamics and the money thing uh i i've i've always really i've took to heart what brother air told me a long time ago which was when you totally totally dedicate yourself to uh in, in in my case a mucus's diet and just transforming yourself and you and you put yourself in that like okay this is this is the priority in my life then the universe starts to take care of you in the sense that it it helps you make decisions so it's it's not that you don't that you don't do anything it's not it's not like the the secret the way some people uh interpret that type of uh, uh law of attraction where okay you just think of something and then yeah. you don't have to do anything you just sit there and it manifests and you know and that kind of thing it's like no you you got you got to work uh in my opinion at least that's that's the approach i take to, to things because on one hand th there's fulfillment through that you know so there's there's actually and there's even laws i think that get into that because uh uh, if if all of a sudden someone just starts giving you a million dollars every day, it's a it's actually a human law. It's like a spiritual law that at some point you're going to want to try to give something back to the entity that is giving you this free money because we have the, and, and you might not even think. But I'm telling you, there's it might take a hundred million. It might take billion. You know, but at some point you're going to be like. Can I can I can I can I get you a can I can I buy you a salad, please? You know it's like please. You know you you you're gonna want to give back. So there's so for me, I've always been a big work person in terms of having unlimited energy to work on things I'm passionate about. So I'm 
I always tell people that first you got to meditate and find what is it that you're passionate about. And then besides diet, you know, just besides that, that thing, what, what is it you're passionate about? Now I'm, I'm passionate about creating. I'm a creator. So if, when I look at my situation, everything can kind of be boiled down into creating things and secondarily would be studying, but the studying funnels into the creativity because when I study and I learn things, I immediately put them and they were, they're reflected in the things that I create. Uh, so whether it be videos or books or music or uh, lectures or courses or whatever it is, that's what I'm passionate about is creating things. Like I don't even care what it is if, if, that I'm creating. I just want to create stuff. Uh, so with other people, you, you know, it's the, the key is doing that meditation. And some of these things, this kind of work can be done when you're fasting. So take full advantage when you even if you're doing a short term fast, two or three days, meditate on some of these things, you know, kind of explore and you'll f you'll feel this connection when you come into an idea that really ex kind of excites you and feels good. Things will line up and that's when you know hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe you're uh, you're you're gifted in performing massage on people or Reiki or. Uh, you might be a great nurse. You're taking care of people. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have a different thing to offer. Uh, and it's it's really our duty to find that thing and then to have the courage to offer it and allow the universe to do what it's what it's going to do so that you are able to do that. You know, uh, and when things so, for instance, on one hand, you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm passionate about food preparation and I want to be able to make, you know, ha you know, have maybe, uh, that, but that's where you start to explore ideas. Well, okay. Do I want to open a restaurant? Do I want to work at, uh, at, at, at somebody's, th uh, somebody else's thing? Do I want to, uh, teach educational videos or do, you know there's you just you could get a long list of all these possibilities and then you use your intuition to say okay well what feels good what makes sense uh and then once you start to make those decisions then you have to be open to the universe the, the talking to you as to what else you need to do to make that happen so it's like, okay, so I, I, you, I've established, I feel good about this. I want to start my own business. Then the universe might bring you a message and say, okay, now you need to, you know, now you need to study taxes a little bit just because you, you want to have a legitimate business within the context of where you're at. So study your local laws. Uh, if there are no local laws about it, then you, then you, and it's going to be different, but to get into that, that can be a message. And those are the messages I notice that people miss. So sometimes they can figure out what they want to do, but they don't start to investigate the the contents of what it truly takes to uh, uh, to, to learn sort of the things on uh, the, the 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 ancillary things that you need to do. So it's like, OK, well, I'm good at cooking, but if you want to get your message out there. Uh, you, you might also need to you know learn a little bit of video editing, you might need to. Uh, you know, learn how to do a spreadsheet to keep all your numbers together. Uh, uh, you know, so these kind of things. So that's to me, that's that that the large scale is like you get the vision, then you allow yourself to actually put the plan together of what it will take to realize that. And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now with Mucus Free Life, me and Brother Air was talking about this back in like 2006, just the idea of putting together an organization that where we could create a platform in order to talk about mucus's diet and uh, put our music out there and our art, you know, all that kind of stuff. We knew that we had to build that, you know, we weren't gonna, there's some people that, that kind of wait, you know, they'll, they'll put together a YouTube channel or something and then they'll just sort of expect that people are just going to find you. It's like, no, <laughs> you gotta, you know, you gotta do the work to, to put it out there. And so, we didn't know how we were going to do it, but it was just, it was an idea that we knew eventually was going to happen. 
And then things started shifting around uh, about you know, four or five years ago. And I got the message that, OK, it's, it's, it's time to do this, what I'm doing now. It was time to do that now as, as opposed to later, because originally I was thinking I was going to do a lot of this stuff when I was a little older in life. But it was like, nah, you you need to do this now. And so. So uh, so ho hopefully that answers as kind of a long, <laughs> a long answer to that. But uh, it's, uh, you know, for it, it is your duty to find out what you're passionate about and how it can contribute to the community because as long as you're contributing to the community and you're you're going going down this path and being true to yourself then the opportunities uh will open up and and then it becomes it just becomes your decision of okay am, are you going to go down that path and just okay this is what i'm doing i'm gonna do this or do you uh uh you know or or do you go back off into whatever you know kind of the whatever the mucus world <laughs> said that you were supposed to do um you know so mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah really that's good. Good. I, I can i can i can, I can accept, accept. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, can, I can i was gonna say i can attest to that in, in my own way, mm. um, because literally I, I created, and, and I want to thank you, um, I created a, um, you know, it's been years in the making, but I, I basically made a decision, and that's all it took. it took. I mean, it took 30 years to make the decision, but I finally made it. I said, you know what? I want to be a chef. Mm -hmm. I want to learn how to do it. I created this fundraiser. That yeah. You contributed to it. And then I raised money to go do it. Yeah. Like six days, like 900 bucks. And it's yeah. like, like if that's not a sign that I'm on the right. So I think it's really comes down to awareness, awareness of yourself, self-awareness. Yeah. And like once you have that awareness start to get bigger, then you start to notice the things that are coming together in your life or the things that aren't. And then, and, and then you can make, you have more options. You have more to see. You, you have because your awareness allows you to see things from a different, I think, perspective, and then you start to, to really start to act on yourself and your, on, on what makes you happy. And you know, I can say that it works. It's just it's true. I mean, you have to find something <laughs> outside of the diet. I mean, it's like that's been my obsession for a long time. But it's like at the end of the day, what 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 can you bring in this world? What can, what, what, what can you contribute? And it's like, well, maybe I can contribute a great transitional tool to this world, which is yeah. banana ice cream. Hey, mm -hmm. whatever, you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. not going to hate on it. You know, yeah. I love that. I think that's a, that, that gets people in the door. And for me, like someone was explaining me, to me the other day, it was like, if that gets them in the door, if that gets somebody interested in what you're doing and you can contribute to to a consciousness that's a little bit outside of their, their original realm of mm -hmm. perspective. I mean, hey, you know, you can change the world like that, and people do, and you probably, you're doing the same thing. I mean, we're just doing it, I mean, I think we're, everybody's doing, I mean, everybody in this community at least is doing that in their own way. I mean, some people are like, you know, a little more active and going to protests and maybe like engaging with people and sharing the book. Maybe that's not my style, but right. maybe making a YouTube channel is, and that's what you're doing. So it's like there's different ways to, to send your message, whatever that might be. Right. And, uh, and in some, you know, one example that comes to mind is in the people that create families. And for some people, that's that's their thing. That's their passion. And there's nothing wrong with that. And when you line it up, if you're passionate, OK, this my, my family the longevity, the life, uh, the, the health and the wellness, my chill of myself and my children. Now I always say myself first, because that's a mistake that I do see some parents make where they will, uh, they will try they will sacrifice their own health, trying to provide extra things or whatever for, for their family and their children. When, uh, I like Brother Air's perspective on that, where it makes more sense to get yourself clean. 
Because if the cleaner you get and the more command that you have over the principles of Mebus's diet, then it will be so much easier for your for you to uh for your family to absorb that. I'm only almost through os- osmosis, you know, where you have to first have that together for yourself to a certain extent and then and bring it uh to your family. But if for, for the people that are raising you know mucus free children, uh having with their children on the diet, uh themselves, I mean that's that's a huge contribution just just to have a family that is uh uh that's that's going down this path and, and keeping them educated keeping them uh roll, rolling down this road that, that's a that's a huge contribution in my opinion and something that i know a lot of people are very passionate about their families and uh that should go hand in hand with mucus's diet you know and putting the mucus's diet in the in the center of uh, of things when it when it comes to the family because that's ultimately going to be the, the longevity the uh, uh avoiding you know i mean i'm I have a loved one that's right now that's going through some, some very tough uh health situations and we had a had a terrible scare like last i mean last uh yesterday i got a call you know for it for a uh, 4 a.m call like oh you know down to the emergency room and going into operation you know it's like this stuff is rough and, and i grew up spending a lot of time in hospitals and nursing homes and s- seeing the worst of the worst when it comes to the the what happens when we don't understand and abide by the uh the laws of mother nature and uh and so and 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 I and I know that's one of the things that that makes me so passionate about getting this information out because uh, it's it's it it is rough. It's rough, rough, rough to see people close to you go through such pain and suffering when it doesn't have to be like that. And I'm not saying that they would just. Oh, you'll get your family and they'll never ever have an ailment or never have to ever. I'm just I'm saying that what what has become normal in terms of pathology uh in this Western world is avoidable. The extremism of it uh is 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 as as Eric said, ninety-nine point nine nine percent based on improper diet, you know, and I tend to agree with Eric on that. That even when you get into, you can say, well, it's the environment and it's the viruses and it's all this is all that pus and mucus eating. You are as long as you're breaking that rule of the of the universe, then you you open yourself up to all of the tragedy that that's out here for us to experience if if, if that is what we so choose to do. And my message is, we've had enough of that. <laughs> We've had enough of the pain and the suffering and the amputating legs and the, you know, we, we just had enough of it. Why do we want more? We don't, it, it hurts and it, and it not only hurts us, but it hurts the people we're with. So why do we want to choose that path anymore? So I'm saying that let's choose a different direction. And now we have a little bit of information to where we can experience life without that the extremism of the pathology that's, that's out here now. I mean, you can't, one of the things that frustrates me the most that I get very angry with is the fact that at hospitals, there's Subway, there's Burger King, there's Wendy's. There's, I was at the hospital, I was just at, there was, there was Wendy's downstairs. Uh, the stuff that they feed the, the sickest of the sick people in the intensive care units and uh, the nursing homes, they're feeding. It should be a crime for the, for these people to be fed this stuff that they're being fed. Uh, it, it it it's just totally ridiculous, and that's where we have to we have to fight. You know, and we, we fight with our physiology, we fight with our knowledge, with our understanding, with our own transitions, so that we can get to a point where we do we build our own institutions, we, we build our own communities. Uh, that that has that we have our own economy you know we have our own because 
there's only going to be a certain extent where we're going to be able to change the pus and mucus institutions. And I'm not saying to, to not try if you're in those space, anything that you can do to start the transition is going to be good. But uh, when, when we get real serious about it, we, we're going to have to come together and, and create our own institutions in our own societies that's, that's going to be out someplace else that's going to be outside of that, uh, of that pus situation because, uh, you know, or, or it's just going to be a, a be, be a fight that we don't, uh, that, that we don't need to have, you know, so it's just a, a different focus, but yeah, that's pus and yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, that's really, 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 uh, touching. I mean, and I share that passion with you cause it's like, it's 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 sad because the 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 rigid re, um, what they what do you call it? you call it extremism like the extremism that's out there now is just the new abnormal and it's so far away from and it's just so it just blows my freaking mind you know what I I think I'm just I've shut down in terms of family and friends this happens to everybody I think can all resonate with this because you have family and friends that are sick almost everybody does and you're not <laughs> I mean, right. that's the that's right. the reality of the situation but it's like it's it's become where switching like going vegan or going raw food or, or eating mucosis diet you know search giving that a shot like that's so out there mm. but it's so normal it's so in line with what we should be doing, but it's so far away from where where we are now. Yeah. With I don't know. And then like the whole family and loved ones thing, it's just like I get it. Because my I mean, I, I hope they don't see this someday, but it's like my parents I mean, I, I got away from like heavy eating, like you too. I mean, it's like I used to eat a lot of food and my dad's a heavy eater, so that that's been like ingrained in it's just like can see them and witness them killing themselves with every bite and it's sad it's it's unfortunate but yeah yeah i mean it's it's just it's so so painful and i've i've always been of the uh, of the opinion or at least the goal of taking these tough things and experiences in life and trying to channel that energy into something positive so from a young age i learned how to to channel the neg the negative energy and the, the anger and the sadness and all these things that i experienced just having grown up with a term terminally ill mother uh and uh and then another a grandmother that was like my mother that passed away you know i i took all of those emotions and turned it into uh something creative and so i would st and and i go back to stuff there are some things i made when i was in sixth grade that that's dark you know i go back and i look at you know i, I wrote stories and poetry and I, I i created this uh actually i created there i got a, vi a, a cassette tape of this thing i made uh, in sixth grade for for a class and uh, I forget what the actual assignment was, but I basically made like a radio show that, uh, and, it, and this was back, you know, it's like stuff is funny because the stuff that I do now is just doing stuff I did when I was a child, but I have better equipment. You know, I got a nicer microphone and not the Fisher Price tape recorder, you know. <laughs> but uh, I recorded this thing where I had the music in the background and then I had, there was a storyline and what was happening was it was uh, the uh, uh, there was a K KKK was was burning a cross in the uh, in, in the yard of, of, of a black family. And and, and I like narrated it, it, the whole thing, like I'm acting like the different characters uh, and, and the police come. So I had this little toy that had that I had when I grew up that it had a siren on it. It was like this little. Uh, 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 what was it called the uh, fire truck and it had this siren and i had that get into the into the mic and then uh and these and i and, and even then i acted like the, the the cops didn't care you know the cops came and they said oh, okay well we'll we'll get to this 
as soon as we're done with our coffee break, you know, and uh, and is and it's just if if I was to play it now, I mean, it's it's timely. I mean, it it, it works right now, but but I was in sixth grade, uh, you know, creating that. You know, and I, play, I remember playing that for the class, and, and my teacher just everybody just kind of had their mouth open, like. Uh, you know. <laughs> But but it, it 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 gives you know it gets that that across you know it gets it got a message across, uh and it, and it was creative, and uh and so to me, that that you know that's what we want to do is where some people want to take that energy and they want to go, they want to go fight you know it's like fight somebody or get mad and do all this kind of stuff it's like, channel that into whatever it is you're passionate about. And if you produce something that's dark, it's dark. You know, if you produce whatever, you know, if it's whatever it is, it's, it's, it's in that realm of creativity and art. And if your art is, if you, whatever you're doing is helping people, you, know, you put it out there, then uh, uh, it becomes the catalyst for change. And, uh, and, and, that's, and that's what we need. We need people to be creating more things that, are of this consciousness of moving in this direction, you know, mucus free ground. Um, it's very, very important. Yeah, creative, artistic. Uh, method. Yeah, I'm definitely involved with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say. I think you said it perfectly. Oh, you know, man. Yeah. There's no response needed. I mean, I think <laughs> you really talked about it really. Yeah, I mean, Without a doubt. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah, how long we've been? Okay, we'll come out of two, two, yeah, hour, uh, hour and a half so far. I think almost two hours. Good, good, good session. Well, let's maybe let's let's take a moment. Let's let me look through the. Uh, the there's been some folks chatting in the, in the live chat. Let's see if there's any any questions over here. Uh, Bacon Jones said, yeah, back when you were talking about your seizures, uh, 35 seizures, seizures from diabetes, that's insane. Yeah, well, I, I lived. <laughs> and uh, then Prima asked, uh, she had missed it. How, how long have you been mucusless? Was a question. Um, so I, I always ask it in the, I frame it. How long have you practiced the mucusless diet? You know, I'm trying to think how to, how to twist that. Although I want to be pretty direct to that answer. Um, so I've been on the mucusless diet healing system, uh, for about two years. Hmm. Okay. It's two and a half years or so. Yeah. Someone had asked about what type of diabetes and then was answered type type one yeah type one um yeah type one is what they told me um, again sugar metabolism problem um, i use I, I fast quite a bit and the reason i fast is because one it cleans out your body and two it cleans out the system the machine and then two um you take less insulin so mm -hmm. um, right Right. So insulin is the harm, harmful thing here, I and mean, insulin is not what you want in the body. Mm -hmm. So one by not eating mucusless foods, and two not by taking a hormone or eating less of it. I think is is a step in the right direction. Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> someone asked, "What do you eat on? Uh, just what's your day look like of of eating?" Um, so my day is, I pretty much don't have breakfast, um, so I have fruit, I would say a small fruit meal, um, sometimes a little bit larger around lunchtime. Um, I've been working towards like 1 or 2 p.m. Um, is when I generally have my first meal. Um, and then I have a salad uh, at about 5 or so. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Sometimes I do three meals. Mm -hmm. Like I think, as per your recommendation, sometimes I have salad um, with the fruit meal. What is that? Carrots. Well, I, yeah, like I've named some of these things. It's in the book. I call it Eric's a two-course meal. 
Yeah. Where, uh, yeah. You have the have the fruit portion or the fruit course. Wait 15 minutes and then have the, the vegetable course, which would be mm. really consist of some kind of raw salad with some other kind of vegetable or something of that nature. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Here's a question that I get some time. This is from uh, Pierre. Uh, I look for why why is there a difference between uh, Dr. Dr. Sabi and Professor Spira's approaches? And um, it really is it's because I come directly out of Professor Arnold Eret's work in the mucus of diet healing system. So I it's it's almost like, OK, Dr. Sabi studied Eret's work and he studied other things that he studied. And he developed his his system, you know, or his. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a. I wouldn't call him his thing a system, but his approach. Uh, you know, I studied the work of Arnold Eret as well, and and I developed a, a, an approach that always goes back to Eret. So even th even when there's things that might be different that Eric, I'm conscious of that. And I will, I will say that I'll say, okay, this isn't exactly in the mucus diet healing system book, but this is what I recommend or what I do. Uh, but every, most everything that, that I talk about, you can go back to the original 1920, uh, uh mucus diet book and there is, and, and understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you read the mucus diet healing system book, it is starkly different than uh, a lot of the philosophies of, of Dr. Savy. And, uh, and so, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, I understand there's, there's a lot of folks that get introduced to Arnold Eric by way of Savy because he does, uh, he, or he did explain that he, he was very much inspired by Eric's work, but he, he does have a lot of different, uh, Kind of philosophies you know one thing that i look at and it's interesting to do an analysis of people's uh i almost call it their uh their their pet projects or their pet concepts uh where every it, it almost becomes a way to define oneself whatever it is that that you really are hardcore about that you're just uh this one point it's so important and you're every time you talk to somebody you're going to talk about that one thing uh that's that's all to, that often is what separates the different communities and that's what separates the different uh people that talk about their health or whatever you with those those approaches and so with sabi the things that he that's like his his pet concepts and then that in return is like the the pet concepts within the community are very different from myself and brother air and, and professor Arnold Eretz. For instance, uh, one of the pet concepts within the Savi community is, uh, is, is the hybrid theory and, and, and sort of this fixation and obsession on staying away from foods that are considered to be quote unquote hybrid. Whereas, our fixation and our what's important to us is not necessarily analyzing or even worrying about the, the, especially because so much of the food that we have today is it's not the same food i don't care if it, it <laughs> whether nature evolved it or, or humans evolved it a bit or changed it or whatever it's it's not the same as it was uh, years ago, the fruit that we have now and the vegetables. It's, it's not the same. My question is, does it does it create slime residue in the body? You know, does if, if you take the item, does it degrade into slime or not? And there are things that are considered hybrid that are totally mucus free, that do not degrade into slime, uh, don't degrade into acids. But that's where we start to have a huge differences of opinion on what is and is not mucus forming uh, because we're coming from a it's, it's a totally different paradigm you know, it's a totally different way to uh, uh, to think and look at the body and, and cleansing and, and that kind of stuff you know different value system uh, 
Uh, and I I only talk about it when I'm asked about it because I'm not because I I, I you know I don't usually say a lot of you know negative things or whatever and analyze other people's systems because I'm just into the mucus diet. But you know, it, 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 it is what it is. I mean, I've worked with a lot of people that have went down the Dr. Sabi road and what and weren't able to fully heal themselves or they, you know, put thousands of dollars into the, the herbs, but they weren't dietary wise. They weren't fasting or weren't doing enemas. They weren't uh, uh, eating mucus free foods. They were still eating a whole lot of grains and starches and things that were considered to be mucus free, but they realized, okay, it's not really mucus free. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of differences there and, uh, it just kind of, kind of is what it is, <laughs> you know, and I don't know, Alex, have you ever checked into Dr. Sabi? You, you have any commentary on, uh, on the Sabi issue? Um, I don't know anything about him. So okay. I, I haven't been inspired to look into him because okay. I feel like I've been in his yeah. diets. I mean, I, I have enough cumulative knowledge, I feel like, to take care of my health. Yeah. Well, I just, at the end of the day, I think all the common principles are pretty much the same. Yeah. Because bass don't eat so much. Uh, eat the best, I mean, eat natural foods for that. I mean, it's pretty simple, clean air, clean water, I mean, for the most part. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I'll be, one thing I did want to touch on, I remember you were talking about, uh, I'm sure I forgot it too. Uh, no, I didn't forget it. What was it? Um, you know what? I think it left me. That's fine. It'll come back, but it's okay. Mm. Let's just move on. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah. It's, but yeah. But it's, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, that that's, I mean, it's part of the work I do. And, you know, so I, I try to stay up on different different people, you know, and, and people, uh, and, and I work with a lot of people that are coming from all these different viewpoints and, uh, and teachers and educators. And, and then I also like to analyze things and I see the, uh, uh, with, within the plant-based eating realm and the healing stuff that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of racial and cultural segregation. Uh, and I've tried to, you know, create a situation where it's like, you know, I'm, one thing I've been real proud of with the com mucus free community is that it's uh, it, that that is just diverse. You know, it's just the diversity of people from all kind from all around the world, from all different walks of life and backgrounds of all ages, of all genders, of all you know. And uh, but I definitely have seen where there's a uh, I mean, I haven't really come across too many other plant-based communities that come close to having that type of diversity. Most of them, they're either they're all white, or they're all black, or they're all Asian. Or they're you know, it's based on on that kind of thing. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I mean, I find that as a, as a problem to me. That's yeah, that's a really cool aspect. I'm glad you touched on that because there isn't a lot of diversity. I mean, we need more. Number one, right. And, uh, <laughs> That's right. There's no yeah. argument about that. I mean, diversity works in nature. It's what permaculture is founded on that diversity. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's a habitat. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. I mean that you know, and and to be for and for everybody to feel comfortable being who they are, mm -hmm. without feeling like they have to change and be somebody else around other people or other communities or something. Um, sure. Uh, cause that's a, you know, cause I noticed that'll happen. I mean, that, well, I mean, that happens a lot with like black folks that get, it will get around, you know, in a white, you know, predominantly white, white environment and they start acting different and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then, I mean, but vice versa it happens sometimes and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem with that. Cause that's a huge systemic issue. And then that, then that, you know, that, that, uh, opens up all kinds of cans of worms we start getting into you know er Eric's opinions on race and we get into yeah a lot of that kind of stuff and um so we, we won't get into that all that today that, that 
<laughs> we, we can do part two sometime. I would like yeah, to. yeah, yeah, part two and kind of get into sociology type. Of thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, which I love. You know, I I just as a musical yeah. anthropologist, as, I, as I've been trained to be. You know, I've I've always enjoyed analyzing culture, trying to understand why we do what we do and think how we think and you know the different value systems and all that kind of stuff and a lot of that can be understood through cultural dynamics and then when we start you start to bring the pus and mucus element in and understanding and you start to see how culture is developed around what people are eating and that's like a foundation of the cultural landscape and uh and that becomes why it's so hard for us when we're when you you know trying to be mucus free and then you notice that it it gets harder and harder to deal with th- with uh, a lot of social situations because your your whole essence is, becomes diametrically opposed to the value system of uh and the practices that are around you you know yeah and and i know it but i can't say that i've i, I mean again I don't know again, but I, I would just say this. It's like, well, I come from kind of like this like white privilege background, and it's like, well, I would like to chime in and say I've suffered through that. But again, you know, I, I probably not to to the very. I mean, the scale of which I've suffered through through exchanging some sort of cultural like value, cultural values. Um, and, and trying to change my environment, I mean, that's been much, it's been hard, according to me. I mean, yeah, it's been very hard. It's very, very tough for me. But again, you know, <laughs> I don't, it's, I don't know how to say this, but on my scale compared to someone else's circumstances, there's just no, there's, there's no comparing. It's apples and oranges, you know what I mean? Yes, I'm going through the same thing, but it's much easier for me to be able to be, to, to come up with a platform of one doing what I'm finding one one number Mm. just finding out what I'm passionate about two being being able to uh, jump on that bandwagon and apply it and take action it's like these are a lot of things that most people just don't even have the choice to do or the option most people are just trying to survive they're trying to put a meal on the table in South Side Chicago and not get shot they're not trying to find out how to be this you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a stop. There's a reality check that most people go through, and it's like I've struck. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I can influence that sector. And I mean, it's like that could be another five hours, five. You know, it's like I have no idea. Yeah, it's that's is that that's a topic. Maybe yeah. I could talk. We could talk together because I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's a. There's a th- a thing uh, in in some of the vegan communities, the raw food communities, that it's like this. Uh, uh, what's, <laughs> what's the word? This uh, this entitlement, you know, just this. And sure. I'm in I'm entitled. You know, it's like the kind of people that say you only. You know, they get mad at you if you if you even think of buying something that or putting something in your body that's not organic. And uh, and they get so just oh I don't please <laughs> get my organic cane sugar. You're right, yeah, yeah. It's like my organic, yeah, cane sugar and, and organic uh, cookies and, and <laughs> but it's organic, you know. And then then you know it's organic eggs and, and that, that whole kind of thing. Whereas uh, like I like to tell people, it's like I don't care what socioeconomic situation you're in. Uh, once you make mucus's diet a, a value system, there's enough latitude and variation for you to start the process. So even if you're in a, if if you're the least, most places around the world, even very poor countries, there are there are fruits fruits and vegetables are somewhere. They might even if they're canned. So if you live someplace where all they have is canned vegetables uh then you can still try start your transition you then 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 eat those canned vegetables uh anything if, if you find something that's canned and mucus free eat it uh if you, if you can get your hand on some uh 
some some vegetables or something you know do do whatever you can do and once you have the that that uh that knowledge of the of transition and and in some kind of plan then you your value system changes what you're trying to do it's kind of like the the people that live in countries where they're impoverished and they're going through a lot of things they put all of their energy sometimes into trying to migrate to a better place to to some place where let's say a better place but they they to migrate to some place where they'll have a better chance of of having the things that they want and that they need in order to survive and so th when you're living in that kind of situation and honestly just practicing the mucus diet period where well, i mean we're kind of almost wherever you're at because everybody's gonna be on a different level but that kind of ingenuity that kind of effort needs to be put in you know these people that that will make a boat you know is down in uh you know cuba or different different places and they, and they had the stories where they, they had this makeshift boat and they'll they'll be trying to row 100 miles in the ocean to try to get to uh you know america or you or wherever they're trying to go uh for for a for a better situation or opportunity uh that and that that type of spirit i mean that's that's the kind of of uh survivalist and revolutionary spirit that uh the mucusless diet is really all about in my opinion because we really are diametrically opposed to so much that's just this mainstream thing and all it's it's just totally opposed to it but uh it's it's for everybody you know and every everybody can can get started even if you had to get started with with the canned stuff get started but then you start to put that kind of effort into putting yourself in a better situation you know and that becomes the difference because there's some people that'll have that have a kind of a defeatist attitude where there's like well i can't you know they use that as an excuse well i don't have enough money or i can't do this or, i can't uh do that in but you get away from that defeatist attitude no matter what situation you're in and you uh uh and by the way i did mucus diet for two years on food stamps so you can't do it yes ex just, just letting you know there you go there you go you know and people who don't believe it it can be done you don't need money i mean you just need the commitment yeah what are you committed to you know what i mean are you committed to your health longevity are you committed to, to telling yourself that you can't do it so change your yeah, but anyways yeah no but that's a great that's a that, yeah, another discussion you know yeah. I, I did uh yeah i, I did the, well i grew up and we was using our food stamps and then uh there was yeah it was about a year or maybe a year and a half of practicing the diet when i was able to get them but that was just there's a opinion that i have i think every you know i guess all the the conservative minded people would be real mad at me but I, I just have this concept like in the society we should was first of all i mean fruits and vegetables are supposed to be you know we're not supposed to pay for them anyway you know uh but in this situation where we where it's not prevalent and just grown in nature and okay we we had to find a way to for us to to cohabitate and compensate each other for various things that we uh that we do that would keep that could, Keep a society together. Keep everybody in whatever we need, so we have we have access to what we need. But uh, but in terms of the way our government is, to me, we should have uh, everybody should get you know, three and four hundred dollars every a month that specifically goes to fruits and green leafy vegetables, not Coca Cola, not saltwater taffy and snickers bars fruits raw fruits and green leafy vegetables you can put that 300 400 dollars toward that every month that i mean now we're talking about mucusless legislation and and you want to talk about a true truly transforming the society you put that kind of situation in there and 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 people that that will start to transition people's health so quick because you know who's going to turn it i mean at some point somebody's just going to be like you know what i got all this money over here i can use for vegetables and fruit fine you know and and, and get people good quality you know the best quality of those items that that they can get because one problem with 
folks in the lower economic situations, they, they unfortunately often don't get exposed to good t- what good fruit tastes like. They get them bags of, of fruit that's like a dollar for a bag of these of water apples that, that have no sweetness and no taste. They're terrible. Uh, and then that will be their fruit experience. So that's why they think fruit is ter- is nasty. You know, or their vegetables are nasty because all they've had uh, uh, at their disposal has been nasty fruit. That's nasty to me too. <laughs> you know, them them cheap apples are are, are, na- are super nasty to me. Um, so you know, so that 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 gets into a whole you know the economics the economics of transition. Uh, that. And you're writing a book about that, correct? Uh, not on the economics, but on the transition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm writing a book on. Well, I got the 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 menu rest, the mucus's diet uh, menu and recipe book that uh, eventually will come out. But that will be, you know, there's going to be quite a bit of transitional uh, methodology and philosophy and stuff uh, in that. But but with that said uh the economics of transition that's actually is a good uh that is a good book title or you know a good title oh. a dissertation or something but maybe i'll write it yeah i'll take it before yeah. you i don't know we'll see right right yeah the ec- economics of transition but because but those are the kinds of things that we're going to need to produce you know as we start to create the 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 documentation and the things that we need the the, phil- the philosophical uh treatises and the things that we need to be at the foundation of a new society you know we, we it's our job i mean we have to create those things because they're not they just don't all that stuff just doesn't get created on its own you know there's people smart people that had been there uh somewhere writing that stuff uh or somewhat smart you know and i questioned some of these documents <laughs> these government documents and things that we were founded on i don't you know question the intelligence of some of the people writing this stuff but um, but we got to create that. <clears throat> and, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's, that's going to be important. I mean, there, it, all these things can happen, you know, uh, as when you grow up in the U in the U S you get a lot of the stuff about the, you know, the myths about the founding fathers and the constitution and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, or if you are in certain religious educational circles and you, you get education about, the law, you know, the different uh, biblical laws and, you know, that were created, all this kind of stuff uh, and, and the storylines of of how these nations were created, you know, how the all this kind of stuff. That's what we're, we're doing that now. Like, that's not some old historical thing that happened years and years ago or in the Bible. It's like we're doing that now. And. And, and we're early enough in where, I mean, we're the founding fathers and mothers of, of an, an entirely new paradigm of life, uh, of a transitional way of living that evolves the human species from Homo sapien to Homo spiritus, uh, as, as some people call it. I mean, this is the real mechanics of doing that, but it's going to, it's going to take effort. You know, it's going to take that kind of revolutionary fervor for us to, uh, you know, to really, to really do this, to, to do this for real and, and to create the, uh, uh, to create a, a society for ourselves. Cause we, whereas we need one, you know, we yeah. need a society. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely, give me one second. Hold on. Um, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that is to, but we can always start with baby steps right Step. yeah yeah i mean i'm you know i'm i'm the i'm a big picture person so i like to i like to explore all the the big sure. things and all the, the why but but it, it it but it really but then i've often also said it it starts with you and your transition because yeah. we can't really have a a serious conversation about any of these other things we talk about until you establish your commitment uh, to, to your own physiology, uh, and then you you build from there. And uh, like we were saying earlier, we we don't want to put the cart before the horse just because we can get ourselves land 
uh, doesn't mean we're clean enough to start that community uh, yet. Uh, and so we, we, we get that plan together, get the ideas together. Uh, you know, you get the financial situation together. And uh, but the most important is getting ourselves clean enough so that when we come together uh, and there's so many examples of failed experiments of people wanting to do what we're talking about, wanting to create some kind of paradise community. But the stuff falls apart because it's based on filthiness. It's people haven't cleansed properly. Uh, and it really falls apart when you got when, when you're not talking about health at all. And <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, folks is, you know, that, that I mean, though, that that can end very tragically as, as it has historically in some of these different some of these different groups and stuff. Yeah, communities have a long track record of uh, <laughs> ups and downs. I, I don't know how else to say it, but a lot of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's small communities, same as a big community. I mean, they're just microcosms of one another. I mean, communities have problems. They have struggles, and, and, and uh, again, I'm not an expert on that, so I, I don't know, but I would imagine there's a lot to... Uh, to, to put together and, and work with but, uh, and, and then you know I just want to say this because I have to go soon I don't want to yeah, yeah. I imagine I'm not sure if you do too but um, just you know and in, in this I just you know I, I just want to say this it might be a little bit maybe I should have said this earlier with some other things but I just want to throw this out there because I think raw food in general, like all these, they, there's just too much focus, and I, I know you agree with this because you say it in your books. <laughs> and this is where I think you've carved a nice niche, and I, I'm, a gl I'm glad you did, and I'm following suit with it because there's very few people one focusing on transition, and two really focusing on cleansing. Because once you clean yourself out everything changes you know what i mean it's like everybody focuses on what to eat rather than what they should get out right instead of what you should put in Let's focus on what you should get out first and i think that's really really important yeah. there's a lot of different ways to do that some of them are debatable some of them i don't really know i mean i i've played with them all i just try to find the best for me i mean i'm trying to get my colon to work better so i don't need animals of clinics or in general i don't use them as much i, I have used them a lot but but you know, I really want to focus on. I really think people should put emphasis on cleaning themselves, um, and diet is the first step. Fasting in conjunction with that will help. Um, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and Dan McDonald, McDonald is my inspiration. I, I know you wrote about him in the book. This is one of the few raw foods that actually focuses on detoxification. Yeah. So they bumped out <laughs> in one. Rather than cake and cake, uh, date and walnut crust pies. Yeah, yeah, right. You're right. The the raw, uh, uh, yeah, the raw, the raw food cookbooks that have like a million ingredients for one food, you know, thing. Where it's, I have a lot of them, so I'm guilty mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, and I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't mean to apologize. I just I took that a little bit different from where you you're pretty deep and philosophical, and I really enjoy that. But uh, I just wanted to point out that there's some people that are still focused on the plate stuff, which most people are. Yeah. So make sure you focus on what you get out rather than what you get in. Yeah. So yeah. Change yeah. Everyone. yeah. I mean, that that in itself is is a huge paradigm shift. Uh, just to shift, I mean, and that's probably one of the most distinctive and uh, in some ways controversial things of the Eret perspective is getting away from this obsession with nutrition and this obsession with okay i need all of these different constituents instead of focusing on that you start to focus on well, what what can i put in my body that's going to help elimination uh yeah that shift it changes everything so it's not so yeah you could look at how we eat and you could analyze it using different nutritional theories and say oh you're still getting such and such or you're still you know, it's like, I mean, if, if you enjoy analyzing that, uh, you would have trouble with brother someone like Brother Air and doing that kind of analysis when he's doing these long fasts and stuff. But uh, 
I just don't find value in that. Uh, to me, you said it's elimination. You know, what what foods eliminate the best for for you and your body? What foods help pull out uh, stuff? And then when you're craving mucus, which we all do uh, at, from time to time, when you're craving mucus, what foods will satisfy you whilst leaving behind the least amount of slime in your body? Yeah. That's that's it. Hey, you know what? I want to. And maybe uh, tell me if you're okay with this first. Was, this is one question that I just had for you, which has come up with people I've talked to in the past. Is like natural law. Like I, I think I have an idea of kind of what that is, but we're not just talking about physical law. I mean, I, you, I mentioned I heard, I heard you mention uh, biblical law. So I mean, like when you say natural laws, I can. When I say natural laws, I think of all the laws such as like serving others and contributing, like being like loving, and like a lot of the biblical laws as well. Like, do you also consider some of those laws? I mean, is it besides what you eat? Yeah, I mean, when when I say natural law, I mean I usually I'm I'm talking about you know observable laws relating to natural uh, and spiritual phenomena. So that that's like that opens it up, you know wide up now when we start to get in the to the specificity of various uh say uh, spiritual laws i mean with the natural stuff we can all that can be self-evident or should be self-evident to, to most people in terms of there's there are various forces at work that that we can observe that's uh self-evident uh, empirical uh and then once you start to get into things that are very specific to various uh, the various ways of looking at the world, you know, then then you have to have a discussion about the, the specificity of these different, you know, if they're so-called spiritual laws. Uh, right. I guess a better question might be, and that was a good answer, is like, do you think there are some spiritual laws that have helped? that may have helped Eric succeed or brother Eric or you succeed faster than some other people on the on the system so you're saying uh sp spiritual laws yeah like i don't mean like you to to say anything controversial like you're gonna start well, like right. outrage but i mean if it, if it does maybe that's okay yeah <laughs> but i'm just well, i mean it's, it's an interesting i mean it's an interesting it, interesting way to put that question because i had because i don't know if i thought about it like that because because i i have a tendency to uh question any anything that that like man's laws you know man-made things and there's a lot of laws that are that were written down in spiritual books that i find that that i would i don't I won't consider them spiritual laws. I consider them man-made laws because they were, even though the, the, you know, that's where, you know, you look into the historical context of the particular law or the story or the book that you're talking about. Uh, but a lot of these, uh, you know, another way to look at it too is, is truths. You can use that word. Uh, sometimes it's, I like, look at, you know, spiritual truths, I use that word instead of spiritual laws, but uh, uh, I mean, for me, there I I like to simplify those things. So for me personally, the, uh, some I found that the vitality equals power minus obstruction, which Eric put out, that that is a natural law, but it's also a, if we use the term spiritual law it's a spiritual law it is a because really any law like that should be applicable to all planes of existence in my opinion vitality equals power minus obstruction works on the physical plane but it also is the rule in the spiritual plane in the mental plane or what if you if you're into the planes philosophy uh because if if you are spiritually obstructed, if you have uh, uh, various uneliminated uh, emotional baggage and and things in your in your being, then it's going to it can you know create illness, uh, create 
uh, thing you prevent you from doing what you want to do uh it can manifest itself in the physical realm and a lot of people would say it always does uh and so in that case the uh it's it's it is as it's just as important to holistically do this work where you're working on your physical but simultaneously you're working on so-called spiritual but for me it's still about the elimination process it's about eliminating the the baggage uh, all of the the the, the, the as they say the emotion energy and motion all this this energy that for whatever reason is is just being all stored up and, and, and not able to flow properly because everything is obstructed our bodies are obstructed our uh spiritual uh, bodies are obstructed you know it's, it's all obstructed and so the removal of obstruction to get to that level of vitality equals power to me is is, is a profound ultimate law like that's just uh something that that really governs uh every everything and so uh in terms of of a of sort of you know kind of a moral code concept uh i i like the uh i like the idea of pro proactive that there's there's two types of thought which and, and i still relate everything back to eric oftentimes uh because i like to bounce off of his theories but where he creates this duality of diet where there's two kinds of foods there's uh mucus and pus forming foods you know disease causing foods and then there's mucus free foods you know or, or, or disease uh or cleansing foods and disease free foods um i like that in the world of decisions uh there is essentially two sides like two uh two different ways that your that your will can the uh, of, of you know ways that you can make decisions you can either make be proactive or you can be reactive and so something happens and and you can either kind of you know reactive and and that might be you know react with anger or this or sadness you know just sort of this emotional whatever you're you're just reacting you know it's like you're there's not a, any control there or you could be proactive and uh which is you know keeping a sober mind about you uh and and making decisions that are in line with in line with the universe and promote non-chaos uh and there's there's a line of spiritual philosophy that gets into the analysis of the removal of chaos from from one's realm and from one's life and that uh k you know where chaos so all the things that, that cause stress and pain and suffering and you know the, the and the cause and effect that's involved in that realm uh that that is uh, uh for lack of a better term part of negative forces that we want to eliminate uh and so i resonate with that and, and so that type of thing is something that I, I think a lot about and it it's from that that i've learned that uh when you you one of the uh, you know one of the things that you'll find that's the only universal spiritual principle that i've seen that co that crosses most uh, uh most religions in the world is do unto others as you would have them do, do to yourself and they say it in a lot of different ways but that's the so-called golden rule mm -hmm. uh the problem one one problem i've seen with that golden rule though is there's some people that because of their they've already broken rules of uh, of nature there because people automatically think about that in, is in a positive way well okay treat other people good and they'll treat you good not everybody wants to be treated well there's a lot of constipated people that that want to fight with you they will treat you badly because they want you to treat them badly because they're constipated <laughs> you know <laughs> that that red meat man i want to fight what you i don't i don't need a friend right now i need a friend to bash their face in you know and and so even these 
so that gets into that Buddhist thing again. We're talking about like there's uh, uh, Th these things can be skewed, you know, pus and mucus skew has the power to skew, take something that you think would be universally good and find a way to defile it and <laughs> just totally, you know, rip it up. It's kind of like the, those stories of, you know, be careful what you wish for. If you, uh, you, if you get a hold of a bad genie and you wish for a bunch of money, uh, and, and the genie all of a sudden transports you to the bottom of the ocean with all this treasure, oh. then uh, you you did a you, know, you did a poor job of, of wishing. You you needed to uh, you know frame what you wanted a little bit better so that you didn't under, you know you didn't fall into that that kind of chaos. I really like that. I've never heard that before. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Got to be specific, or at least. <laughs> Jeez. So, you know, so then, of course, that could be another, that'd be another hours of, of talking to even get into that. But those are, as far as for me personally, I mean, that's a, those are some of the uh, more spiritual ideals that have helped me along the way. In, in yeah. Life. And I liked how you said it all kind of branched from Eric. I mean, for me, it's the same, you know, it all kind of clicks. I mean, it, it all stems from that overall philosophy of, of less obstruction, more, I mean, just less of everything, pretty mm -hmm. much, you know, elimination and just like, everything starts to arrange itself, I think, and what we're really trying, I guess my answer is like, my question was, it was like, well, I don't know, it's like as David Wolf said back when I was, this was like my inspiration way back when he said like, the reason raw food works, and, and again, I'm not focused on raw food. I'm just using this as an example. Right. He said the reason, the funny thing about raw food is the irony is it works, but you can't explain why. It just works. It's like, it, I don't know. I feel like that applies to this conversation. Like the, the, the system works, and you don't really need to have these concrete, scientific, like analytical background or evidence-based like um, doctoral type uh, I mean you, you can but I, I think it just works on a practical level which is so brilliant and so lovely and I think it can unshack us and allow for our infinite potential to sprout so without, without further ado I want to say thank you you know I, I think we're good timing out yeah uh, man yeah no I really uh yeah I appreciate you uh you know being able to you know make this happen you know it's a couple it took took a minute for things to line up but you know the timing is always uh, uh is always right you know the universe has a way of aligning things and having things happen so for some reason this is the perfect time for us to have had this conversation so absolutely <clears throat> so i definitely Amen. appreciate you know yeah appreciate your time and uh, now, do you have any any websites yet, or fan pages, or anything like that? Do you, uh, so I'm working on that. Um, I, I, I wish I did, but I don't right now. Um, the only thing that I do have is, if you're interested, again, I don't really want to promote, but I feel like it's not really promoting. It's just sharing with the world what I'm doing, and um, I'm creating, trying to create a raw foods restaurant. Um, the website is www.gofundme.com backslash raw dream that's it that's the only thing i'm doing right now um otherwise i'm going to be creating a book mm. i'm actually working on it right now and um i have a title for it but it's called it's going to be called diabetes gone right mm. and then uh and the yeah and uh the inspiration from that was girls gone wild i took it i was like diabetes gone and i was like i mean i can create something funny about that so i'm like that's yeah. what i'm doing right now yeah yeah, that, <laughs> yeah that's cool <laughs> with an exclamation point so i'm going to teach diabetics how to how to work the system to your advantage because a lot of people have questions about that and uh, i think it's yeah it's all part of, i mean you, you can do that too as well but maybe if people Curious about my situation, I'd be happy to help. So, anyway. yeah, 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 most definitely. Yeah, the more that we can just get this information out, this whole this is a vibration, it's a a, a, a vib sort of a frequency of consciousness. And as we, the more of us that are putting it out there in different formats and different 
ways. It's just, it's uh, it's gonna, it's gonna just change things for the for the better. And it, and it makes it easier for us to do what we want to do in terms of our transitions and trying to clean ourselves up. It just uh, uh, keeps it's it's a momentum, and and we're, and we're starting to see it. Uh, it's, it's happening just right before our eyes, where people are really starting to plug in and figure this thing out. And um, so we are, you know, on the on these front lines, the front lines of, of this transition. We're plus. Yeah, we're close. We're making a lot of progress, so I'm very grateful. So, so thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, thank you, brother Alex. And uh, yeah, yeah, check out his. Uh, yeah, you said the GoFundMe. Check that out. You know, support, support him, support the community. Uh, you can find all my stuff mucusfreelife.com and uh, Professor Spear of Facebook and Mucus Free Life LLC Facebook and uh, Professor Arnold Eret Mucus's Diet Healing System. Uh, group uh, you can sign up for uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, insiders club all that stuff so there's a lot of a lot of ways to plug in so just uh, plug in definitely if you haven't got a copy of the mucus diet healing system uh you gotta get the this is my annotated word yeah. great book <laughs> yeah, because spirit my, speaks is my favorite, but it, okay, yeah, it. spirit spirit speaks is a uh, you know pra some practical case studies and philosophies and things of this, my my journey, but uh, yeah, just just get it, get active, get involved, start the transition. Uh, don't be hard on yourself, you know, have fun, and uh, and just uh, you know keep on keep on doing this work. It's very very important work. So. All right. So one more time, I thank Alex for, for being on here. And I thank all of you for tuning in. And until next time, peace, love, and breath. Okay. Namaste, my friend. Bye. Bye.